On Saturday, August 12, 2017, 32-year-old Heather Heyer was killed while protesting the white supremacy rally in Charlottesville, Virginia. This brave woman who wanted nothing other than for everybody to be accepted and treated equally became the latest casualty in a war against hatred, bigotry, and ignorance. To make things worse, it took our president two full days to make a statement, and when he did, he blamed both sides for the violence. We condemn in the strongest possible terms this egregious display of hatred, bigotry, and violence on many sides. On many sides. What about the alt-left that came charging at the, as you say, the alt-right? Do they have any semblance of guilt? Well, guess what? There was violence on both sides of Normandy Beach, too. But if one side wasn't there first, the other probably would have been happy staying home. And you can bet those veterans who stormed the beach that day don't feel any guilt for their actions. Many are marching in his name, and he doesn't appear to be the least bit upset about this. Really, it must be a weird feeling for his biggest group of supporters, those generations who themselves or whose parents went to Europe in World War II to fight against the Nazis, that he can't be bothered to say anything negative against the Nazis in our own country right now. And this is somebody who is quite easily triggered by just about anything, from actors Kristen Stewart and Samuel L. Jackson, to Django Unchained and Hamilton, from Macy's and Nordstrom, to the Super Bowl and Major League Baseball, from his own party to the standards of the presidency itself. He gets an instant hate on for just about anything except Nazis. Oh, and dictators too, for some reason. He was a young man of 26 or 27 when he took over from his father, when his father died. Uh, he's dealing with obviously very tough people, in particular the generals and others. And at a very young age, he was able to assume power. A lot of people, I'm sure, tried to take that power away, whether it was his uncle or anybody else. And he was able to do it. So. Obviously, he's a pretty smart cookie. The commander-in-chief commended Philippine President Rodrigo Duterte's, quote, unbelievable job on the drug problem. After becoming president, Duterte encouraged police and others to shoot suspected drug dealers and users on site. Duterte's so-called war on drugs has been condemned by human rights groups and several world leaders. As of April, the death toll was over 7,000 people. Duterte, who has been called the Punisher, told President Trump drugs cause a lot of suffering in the Philippines. According to outlets that obtained the transcript, Trump appeared relatively unconcerned with human rights violations, and politicians from both sides of the aisle criticized Trump this week for not taking a hard stance on human rights in a speech he gave in Saudi Arabia. And when referring to a comment that Putin made about you, I think he called you a brilliant leader, you said it's always a great honor to be so nicely complimented by a man so highly respected within his country and beyond. Well, he does have an 82% approval rating, according to the different pollsters, who, by the way, some of them are based right here. Look, he's also look. a guy who annexed Crimea, invaded Ukraine, supports Assad in Syria, supports Iran, is trying to undermine our influence in key regions of the world, and according to our intelligence community, probably is the main suspect for the hacking of the DNC computers. Well, nobody basically. knows that for a fact. Do you At want to be time? complimented by that former KGB officer? Well, I think when he calls me brilliant, I'll take the compliment, okay? White supremacists and KKK members are even thanking the president for his words on the subject. They certainly feel as though they have his approval, so it's almost assured they will be planning even more marches. Protesting obviously doesn't have any effect. In fact, they seem to revel in the chaos they cause. So maybe more creative solutions are needed, such as the way the small town of Wunsiedel, Germany dealt with their Nazi problem in 2014. Nazis are attracted to Wunsiedel because it was, up until 2011, the final resting place of Rudolf Hess. Hess was a World War I veteran who became the 16th member of the Nazi party in July 1920 after hearing Hitler speak at a beer hall in Munich. The two were imprisoned in 1923 after trying to take control of Germany, during which time Hess took dictation of Mein Kampf. By 1939, he was named Hitler's second successor after Goring. In May of 1941, he flew to Scotland on what he called a peace mission. In trying to avoid a two-front war, he proposed Britain let Germany take over Europe, something he deemed inevitable anyway, and in return, the nation would be left alone. He was soon made a POW and sent back to Germany in 1945 for the Nuremberg Trials. In 1987, at the age of 93, he committed suicide while still in prison. He was initially buried at a secret location to avoid demonstrations by Nazi sympathizers, but was relocated to Wunsiedel in 1988 where his grave became a shrine anyway. 
In 2011, his body was exhumed, cremated, and scattered at sea, and headstone destroyed, but that didn't stop Nazis from around Europe from making the annual pilgrimage to the town. Hey! I just learned some history, and I didn't need a statue commemorating Hess to do it. Wow, what a concept. No amount of protesting or legal action had any effect, so on the annual November 15th march, the town decided to take a different approach. A group called Right Against Right decided to sponsor the marchers instead. In what was called Germany's most involuntary walkathon, residents of the town donated 10 euro for every meter they walked. This charity was founded in 2000 by criminologist Bernd Wagner and former neo-Nazi leader Ingo Hasselbach and aids those who wish to leave the far right, which can be difficult as many no longer have any contacts outside their sect. When the march began at 148, they crossed the starting line that had been painted in the road. Now that may have seemed peculiar, but the further they marched, the more clues they got that something was up. The town hung banners along the route, some thanking the marchers for participating, while others were more motivational, with slogans such as quick like a greyhound, tough like leather, and generous as never before, and if only the Fuhrer knew. At the halfway mark, there was another sign painted in the road thanking them for raising 5,000 euros so far. There was a station handing out bananas to ensure the Nazis had enough energy to finish their march with banners reading My Munch and Proud to be German and Generous. When they reached the end at 328, there was one more banner thanking them for helping raise 10,000 euro to help people leave their cause. Jeez, it took an hour and 40 minutes to walk one kilometer? Is this what they all looked like getting up that morning? Sir! I have a plan. <laughs> Monsieur has been walked! The marchers were even given certificates at the end. Here's one with a rough translation. Right Against Right organizer Fabian Wickman told The Guardian, We want to show what else you can do. What other courses of action you have? You can do more than just block the street or close the shutters. Wunzido was just the first town, as Right Against Right has held these involuntary walkathons several times now, raising over 47,000 euro for Exit Deutschland and Exit Tattoo Removal, which removes political tattoos from those who have left the far right for free. Right Against Right wasn't even the first to have a hate group and voluntarily raise money for a charity that goes against their beliefs. In 2011, comedian Lisa Lampanelli did a show in Topeka, Kansas that the Westboro Baptist Church planned on picketing. In response, she decided to donate $1,000 for every member who showed up to the Gay Men's Health Crisis, the nation's oldest HIV AIDS prevention and service organization, who ended up receiving a $50,000 check in the church's name. In both cases, the Nazis and homophobes essentially ended up demonstrating against themselves. And if they can't stand charities that aid those they disagree with, the solution is simple. If you don't want to help the other side, just don't show up. 